Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an overview of key frictions in subprime securitization for FRM candidates. This is from the excellent assigned case study called Understanding the Securitization of Subprime Mortgage Credit by Adam Ashcraft of the New York Fed and Till Schurman. And the idea here is to identify the key players in the subprime securitization and to highlight the key frictions that caused the breakdown. And there are seven frictions identified, but only five are really isolated as the real problems. And we'll see there are two key themes here. One is moral hazard. The second is information asymmetry. Information asymmetry is when one counterparty knows more than the other counterparty in a transaction. So we start with the first friction between the borrower and the originator. In our case study, the originator was New Century Financial. In 2006, the largest originator was HSBC. So the originator, possibly through a broker, underwrites and funds the loan. The originator is compensated through fees paid by the borrower and by the proceeds of the mortgage loan sale. This first friction is between the borrower and the originator and it leads to the possibility of predatory lending. The second friction is between the originator and the arranger. In our case study, the arranger was actually Goldman Sachs. In 2006, the largest arranger was Countrywide Financial. So the pool of mortgage loans is purchased from the originator by the arranger, also sometimes called the issuer, and it is the job of the arranger to conduct due diligence on the originator. The arranger creates the bankruptcy remote trust that I've reviewed in previous screencasts. So this second key friction is around the information problem between the originator and the arranger. Specifically, the originator knows more about the borrower than the arranger does. Now, the originator typically needs to make several representations and warranties about the borrower, and if these are violated, the originator needs to buy that lemon loan back. But this requires the originator to have the capital to do that. Now, the third friction is between the arranger and the third parties, and there are three key third parties here. The warehouse lender, that's a large commercial or investment bank that ultimately provides the funds for the loan. They provide the funds, and the unsold loans are posted as collateral. The second are the credit rating agencies, which in this case study, if there is blame ascribed by the authors, it probably is mostly to the credit rating agencies. And then third, as part of the third parties, are the asset managers. So we have the problem of adverse selection between the arranger and the warehouse lender. We have a problem of adverse selection between the arranger and the credit rating agency. That's because the opinion of the rating agencies is vulnerable to the lemon problems. In the same way that the originator knows more about the borrower than the arranger, the, both the originator and the arranger know more about the borrower than the credit rating agency. And according to the authors, the credit rating agencies performed limited due diligence on not only the borrowers, of course, but the arranger and the originator. And so finally is the third part of this friction between arrangers and third parties. We have the friction between the arranger and the asset manager. And again, here we have an information problem. The asset manager typically conducted limited due diligence on the arranger. The fourth friction, which is not isolated as one of the key frictions, is between the borrower and the servicer. In 2006, JP Morgan would have been the second largest servicer. The trust employs a servicer for the uh, who is responsible for the collection of the loan payments. And the specific problem here is moral hazard, and that is during the delinquency phase of the borrower. 
when the borrower is delinquent, they can still, they're not in default yet. And according to the authors, there's a specific moral hazard at that point. The servicer, by way, by virtue of the way that they are compensated, may not be incented to act in investors' best interest. The fifth friction is between the servicer and the third parties, in particular, the asset manager and the credit rating agencies. Moody's has estimated that servicer quality can affect the level of losses by plus or minus 10%. And again, a friction between the servicer and the credit rating agency because the accuracy of the credit rating placed on the securities issued by the trust is vulnerable to the use of a low quality servicer. The sixth friction is between the asset manager and the investor and this is called the principal agent problem. Specifically, the investor will not fully understand the strategy of the manager, may be uncertain about the asset manager's ability and does not observe any effort that the manager makes to conduct due diligence and clearly in many cases the asset manager is not really conducting due diligence of the arranger, the originator and the underlying borrowers. The seventh and final friction is between the investor and the credit rating agencies, what the authors call model error. The rating agencies are paid by the issuer and not the investors for their opinion, which of course creates a potential conflict of interest, a potential conflict which has been well publicized. Since the investor is not able to assess the efficacy of rating agency models, according to the authors, they are susceptible to both, both honest and dishonest errors on the part of the credit rating agencies. So now given that there are seven frictions identified, I'll quickly highlight the five frictions that the authors blame for the cause of the subprime crisis. And it really runs this chain as it as identified by the red arrows and this these five frictions they start with the borrower and the first friction that leads to the possibility of both predatory borrowing and predatory lending and that chains that chain ends with the asset manager and the principal agent problem and the nexus here of the problem is the ability of the arranger and the originator to securitize lemon loans or unduly risky loans. And according to the authors, this was a rating arbitrage and that as long as the asset managers were not conducting due diligence over the arranger and originators, this meant that the, it was the the only thing that could prevent this was the credit rating agencies and their rating. And so it's for this reason that the rating agencies float at least to the top of the uh, list of key frictions according to this case study. So I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.